Yeah, he's just gonna use You know? Anyway, <laughs> you ready to make a podcast? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Hey there. Daddy, bitch. Jesus. <laughs> Welcome to Coming Up for Air. And if you're not paying attention, I hope you are now. An introspective podcast. I'm your co host, Jackson. I'm your co host, that loud motherfucker, Brendan. <laughs> hey, honestly, bro. Huh? Yeah, hey, if you listened to, to the last episode, I'm going to let you know right now. I'm so sorry. I really didn't know what the fuck I was talking about, but I knew what I was trying to talk about in my head, but didn't really portray it like that. So thanks for sticking with us if you're still here. <laughs> Doing great. Oh, man. Uh, today. We're talking about celebrating the ones who do. I'll kind of explain what that is as we get to the main And shooting the ones who don't. I'll kind of explain what that means and everything whenever we get to it. Uh, But for now, we're going to hit a check-in. Brent died. Gang shit. Um, Oh, yeah, huh? Um, I know it's a little bit kind of after, and it's kind of like piped down and no real, like... I guess other information I haven't really, I've been kind of off socials right now, but from what I did see on YouTube, um, from the explanation of it, the whole like Kai Senate situation and his name being involved in one of his homies, um, sexually assaulting a woman, um, at a party that I'm pretty sure it was Kai's party or like Kai Kai's New Year's Eve party. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, this woman had came out and said that she was sexually assaulted and raped. Um, and she even went to the hospital and got a whole kit. Uh, evidence was proven. She was bleeding um, from her genitals. And it was it was very bad. Um, it was just not, obviously, like, no human should have to go through what that woman went through. Um, and so it wasn't Kai, obviously, as we found out later on but i think just a lot of like the stipulations behind kai quote-unquote protecting a rapist and a lot of people like at first kind of came out almost like judging him because he didn't necessarily just put out like the homie's name or anything like that and i think a lot of people kind of like obviously as they should come to the defense of like just a we need to find out like obviously who did this they need to you know pay for it and things like that um but I was just watching some other people kind of talk about it, and they were like, you know, you kind of have to realize, like, in Kai's situation, he's the number one streamer on Twitch. I think we talked about it a little bit last episode. Did we? Like, very quick, I think. But... Yeah. Um. But, yeah, just kind of, like, in the aspect of, like, I think people kind of failed to see, like... Obviously, I think we've seen Kai's not a malicious human. You know what I mean? Like there's some people who you can kind of tell like, Oh, they definitely like are like a two faced kind of have like two personalities type thing. Uh, like one on the internet and one behind closed doors. And I think we've kind of seen, like, I think he's been kind of transparent with us. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's over exaggerating on a lot of stuff and, and you know, he's an entertainer. He's going to do what he has to, you know what I mean? Get his views and stuff like that. But I think from that standpoint as like a human being, he obviously had to make sure he took care of his career first and, like, his, like, platform, you know what I mean? And, like, really understand how he was supposed to come out and say what he said and, like, you know, do the damage control on his whole, like, PR statement and basically do what he had to do first. Um, and then later on, like, give the information to the police rather than just giving it out to social media and letting social media kind of eat it up and, like, do everything. Because he could have easily played this as, like, a... As, like, a view thing. You know what I mean? He easily could have... He could have finessed it and been like, oh, like, my homie, blah, 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 confronting my homie, yada, yada. Like, he easily could have ran with that. You know what I mean? And I think... That's the real shitbag thing to do. Yeah, you know what I mean? Which I think people don't realize, like, if he does come out on social media and just kind of outs this dude and, like, puts all this information out there, whether it be her, like, laundry or, like, even this dude's laundry, like, it... One, I don't think that's really, yeah, like, his laundry to air. Granted, she went public with it, which makes it a little bit more his because she yeah, I mean, directed him. Yeah, and obviously, like, she brought him in and was like, yo, this is one of his homies, but also in the same sense, like, Kai was just almost like, yo, like, obviously I didn't do anything. Like, 
what the fuck is happening? Like, why am I even involved in this? You know what I mean? And I think he did the right thing with just giving the information to the authorities and his lawyers and stuff like that and kind of just letting them handle it. Um, but I just thought it was crazy how many people were kind of like basically attacking Kai. You know what I mean? And kind of like telling him like, oh, like you're a piece of shit. Why are you protecting him? Like, yada, yada. And then it's like, you be at the top of wherever you want to be and have somebody else around you with this allegation or put you in this predicament, how would you kind of react to that? You Not only I mean? that, but the more public affairs can get meddled with, it sometimes can, it sometimes can make like legal repercussions harder to pull off because if it gets so public or because people get so involved. Yeah, and you don't know like what... like opinions are being thrown around what's getting twisted around and stuff like that so for him to just kind of like let everything be private and like the the truth kind of like come like slowly unfold like through the authorities and stuff like that i think was the best play to like obviously for that situation and like to really help that girl get obviously justice because i guess as much as they come out on social media and say it's like it's not the people on the fucking behind the phones that can arrest that dude or like bring him sometimes the best thing you can do is literally stay quiet i know a lot of people were like digging at him because when he made his like statement about it, he was reading off his phone. Like he would check bullet points. Well, yeah, because it was a full like PR blown. Yeah. Like and I think that people misunderstand the difference between like sincere speak and sincere PR speak, and then just PR speak. And sincere PR speak is like I'm saying what I need to say because just I just in a need, professional format. Yeah, I have to hit these bullet points because these are all the questions that I need to answer yeah. and the things that will help me stay. Clear of the ring shit. Yeah, literally. Like, you know what I mean? Like, stay out of the way of the debris. Yeah. Um, whereas, if you are just making a PR statement to make a PR statement like Logan Paul, then... Um, yeah, that was rough, dude. Yeah, that's also wild. Um, then you're... You know, it, it's clear when the PR statement is like, I am doing this because I don't know how to dig myself out. I'm and about, I know I'm that about, I'm all about, of <sighs> my, like... Cult members will listen. Yeah, I'm about to add George Janko. Because I know he has got a house out here. George? I don't know who that is. He is the dude he who got shit on for his religion on Logan's podcast. He's like, homie. Oh. And you didn't see that clip? No. That's like one is of Is it when he walks away? Like, walks off the set? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. But well, I didn't... I well, didn't, no, I didn't. actually, I think that was a different instance. So, there was like an instance. Obviously, this is completely aside from the Kai, from the Kai situation. But uh, they had like Wiz Khalifa on... And obviously they were smoking. They were super faded. And that's kind of like Logan's excuses. Like hey, that was the highest he's ever been. But um, George, who is the, um, I guess you like, he's a darker tone out of all of them. He, he's on the left. Yeah, the Middle Eastern guy. Yeah, yeah, kind of bushy beard. Um, yeah, yeah, because then because it, it's Logan, Mike, and then the dude across from him is is George. Okay, and so George is a very like faithful man in like his Christianity and like believes in God and stuff like that. And so um, Logan basically just like was like, you know, if you believe in like religion, like you're a piece of shit. Like all your people have like you know, done this and done yeah, that. Like, I, I wouldn't go that far saying Bro, like you're a piece of shit for believing in he was something. Like, he, he was like, he was like, you guys have had pure hatred for so many years, like in history, like yada, yada, this and that. And he was like, he, George literally looks at me and goes, Logan, you know me. Have I ever brought any hate to you for anything you believe in? And Logan's like, but your people. <laughs> and George is like, wow. me, Logan, like me, right? And bro, internet. I ate, am part of those people. Yeah, the internet ate his ass, like, ate his ass up for saying that shit, bro. And it was just like, wow. He's um, on a hot streak of fucking up. Yeah, and it was just like. It's it, almost like. He's the guy who did the tree thing in Japan. Well, and that's who like would have thought that, that he was kind of keeps doing bad shit. And that was my thing. Is Welcome like, to the drama cast. That was my thing. Is like you made the mistake that you did with your brother in Japan. You would think that that whole situation and being allowed back into the industry and kind of still yeah. being at the top How of what are, you like, do. It's so impressive that he's that either of them are even like relevant. And very relevant at that. Yeah. Like, like highly stupid, talked about, like... Stupid relevant. Like, still amongst the top content creators. Yeah. And it's just... It blows my mind that, like... How do we let this happen? Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, like it's just... It's crazy to me. You know what I mean? And it's just... 
Yeah, there's so much. But, I mean, regardless, like, I'm glad, you know, first off with this Kai situation, I'm glad this girl obviously got her justice. And, like, you know, this dude is being brought to justice um, as far as, you know, we can tell you with the investigation and stuff like that. Um, But I just don't get how there's a bunch of, like, like, Kai's getting a bunch of shit. He shouldn't be getting a bunch of shit. Logan should literally not. Content creator doomsday. He should not really have a platform right now. I think he needs some help. And I, I, I don't even think it's right now. I think it's a period thing. And I was talking to, uh, I was talking to our friend Josh, right? Because he's a big Logan Paul. Like he drinks prime, like like it's water. Paul juice. Yeah, like he actually drink. He he won't drink water. He only drinks prime. The fuck is prime? Uh, Logan Paul's nutrition drink. Okay, it's like uh like an enhanced water, right? So it just has electrolytes in it. Yeah, but it's, like, flavored, and it's, like, no sugar and all their shit. It's Propel. Basically. But he's drinking Propel Zero? Yeah, but he refuses (laughs) to drink, like, actual water. That's also weird. Yeah, it's just... uh, Like, I had him drink some spring water, and he was like, anything with minerals? He was like, I literally can't drink. I was like, you're... I want to punch you in the forehead. Regardless. (laughs) Um... I only drink I, well, artisanal per pound. <laughs> I told him. I told him. I was like. I was like, bro. I was like, I don't know if you realize. I was like, but like, if you look at Logan's like demeanor in those clips, like you could literally try and pull up the clip, bro. Like he looks almost like soulless. I don't know if it's because he's just really high, but it's just like I just think he always looks like that. It's just, I think he it's just crazy. is a shitty person. <laughs> like. I, he has constantly throughout his whole career done awful stuff to people with no remorse and then makes a blanket PR statement out of nowhere whenever he's like, I'm in too deep now. And so he'll make a statement and then he does the same thing. It's like, how many times do we kind of, you know, does I, this guy get away with it? Yeah, it just, I don't know, it blows my mind. But I, I honestly think like he's one of those people that maybe he just he can't get canceled because like how many times can you like tell somebody like all right we're not we're not gonna watch your shit and then when they put out something they're like oh i want to see what he said <laughs> like they say we're in the like, same I, cycle I, I don't know if it's just because it's like he <laughs> is the embodiment of like the train wreck like you know or the car crash like you're watching a car cl- crash in slow motion so you can't look away yeah. type thing i don't know if it's just that phenomenon or what but like I've never consumed any of his content because just like his personality irks me. I honestly used to watch the episodes of Impulsive really because I do like Mike and I do like George. And for a while, I really did like Logan there for a minute. And then this came out and I was like, bro, you what? were doing so he well. He does awful shit all the time. He, he he had a good streak for a little bit. I don't think he did because he did some bad shit in the good streak, didn't he? That he had to apologize for. Not I'm, like a full video. I was like, I don't know if I was really keeping up like that, but I thought like in the Mayweather area where he really started boxing, he was like in a, he was like, he was he had a really good streak in there. I think he did some bad shit then too. I think it was more Jake Paul that was doing all the bad shit and getting Both the clout of them for suck. it. Yeah, Jake is just a pure genius on I'm gonna attract as much negative clout to my name as possible because it's just gonna make me pop and go viral and he's okay with it. He that's why he is Some the problem don't child. Deserve money. That's why he's the problem child and, and labeled himself the problem child because he's okay with it. He gets money for it. What an easy life. Yeah, the more problems you create, the more money you get. Do you think he's just like a robot? Like he's just so turned off that like it, none of it hurts. Emotionally, yeah, you, lit- just, you literally you literally like, Yeah, like I'm sure you He lit- doesn't even open Twitter unless it's like he like tells his like PR person he's like all right open Twitter, like he doesn't look at it. He just says tweet out I hate all, and then just something. <laughs> and then he's like send yeah. He's like let me know when it, what like what the numbers are looking like yeah. in like an hour, and then walks yeah. away. Yeah, he's like just tell me how I did. I'm gonna go take a bath. Yeah, I don't know in my sixty foot tub. Yeah, I'm gonna go take a bath in my pool. Yeah. Basically, this shit fucking blows my mind, dude. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of like Logan Paul. Really, I didn't want to check in on, but it was mostly the Kai saying it. But it yeah, just yeah. Came up. But I mean, I think overall, it's just I think like, the Kai stuff's also a lot harder to talk about because it's still kind of unraveling, and there's things that we don't really know. 
So I don't want to put too much. I'm just, I'm just glad that Kai's not a piece of shit. <laughs> There's still stuff we don't know, but yeah. For, like, at, at the way it looks, Kai's not a piece yeah, of shit. At the current moment, it seems like, and from the statement that I saw Kai make, it does seem like he genuinely is like, I don't fuck with this. I can't believe this happened. Like, I'm trying my best to handle it the proper way, which means through the legal process and not publicly because it's not something that should be handled publicly. Yeah. Anyway. What about you, my guy? I want to talk about The Last of Us. <gasps> the show came out last night. Did it? Yeah. She's mine. Was it good? I didn't watch it yet. Oh. Um, only the first episode came out. Okay. Um, I was supposed to watch it with my mama, but then I had to get back to my side of town uh, by the time that it aired because we didn't realize that it was only going to air when it hit 9 p.m. Eastern time. Eastern Standard Time. So it's like 8 o'clock our time? 7. seven right now but i was like damn and so they watched it though and they told me that it was really good and that they liked it so far and i've heard things it's got like 100 percent right now and it seems like it's doing really good and the lead writer for the games is the writer for the show oh nice some stuff so it's not gonna be the exact same um so i'm really excited yeah i don't think i ever played the game to be honest they're with you. so good i want to get a last of us tattoo you look I, like a Last of Us tattoo. I don't want to get like a basic bitch one. Like I don't want to get Ellie's tattoo, and I don't want to get a Firefly. Cause that's also basic. You look like a Firefly, dumb bitch. You doom got him. You're not funny. Gotcha, bitch. You're not funny. Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> uh, gotcha. Soko only calls you Chandler. I think it's because he can't remember your name fully. But why Chandler, Mister Beast? I guess one of his homies' name is Chandler. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and so Soko just calls anybody who's making content with me. Chandler? Yeah. Because you're Mr. Beast? I guess. Hey, if you turn out to be Mr. Beast, bro, I'm okay with it. I want <laughs> so many events. <laughs> I'm so okay with you being Mr. Beast if if it means you being as rich as Mr. Beast. <laughs> It'd be kind of fun. Oh, yeah, but that'd be kind of lit. Only because, like, one, I could, like, help the people out around me, and then, two, I could just do me. those events. Like, that's really what I want to do. Just me. Of course, <laughs> I'll help you out, Brent. I'd, no, 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 just me. You'd also be making money with me, though. No, 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 just me. <laughs> little fucking bitch. I'm trying to get out my pee-pee, if you guys didn't see that. I like your pee-pee. Anyway, I'm very excited for the show. Uh... Check it out. I'm sure it's cool. <laughs> I'm sure it's good. I'm watching the first episode today. So. If you didn't play the game, play the game first. No, you don't need to. Oh. Because it's after the first game. Or it takes place. At, it's the first game, but retold, basically. Oh. So maybe do both. Uh, They're good games. If you haven't played them, play I, them. I ain't got the whole PSN thing, so I probably won't play it. You don't need PSN. I thought it was on PlayStation to play the game. It is on PlayStation. Uh, PSN is... Uh, you don't have PlayStation Network is what I thought you meant. I was like, you don't need... Yeah, I thought you can only play it on PlayStation. Yeah, you can only play it on PlayStation right now. But Sony slowly seems like they're releasing their exclusives to Steam. God of War and Spider-Man. Wait, God of War's on Steam? Yeah. What? Not God of War 2. No, I mean God of War Ragnarok. Yeah, not that one. God of War 2018 is, though. I'm pissed. Yeah, it's been on Steam for a minute. No, I wanted to play Ragnarok. Oh, it's probably going to come, but it'll probably be in like a year. I'm so mad. Pretty lit. Pretty good game. 100% of it. The video's coming out soon. Yeah? I'm, at, finished, uh, I'm still working on it um, because it's kind of the video that I'm learning my editing style that I like. But that video's going to come out soon. Nice. On my main channel. Nice cock. And then I'm going to get all the VODs. Anyway, this is important. <laughs> Let's hit the main topic, brother. Let's talk about celebrating the ones who do. What do you mean by that, my boy? Yeah, so let's. I'm going to break down what this topic means. So, um, there is a story about the founder of Nike, and he is giving basically he's like doing a seminar and talking about Nike. And whenever you're in that position and you are like the CEO of a company or founder of a company, you are always marketing this thing when you go to do a seminar or like speak. 
So he asks everybody in the audience to stand up if they go running. And then, you know, everybody kind of stands up. And then he goes, sit down or keep standing if you go running once a month. Some people sit down. Keep standing if you go running once a week or once every two weeks. Sit down. Keep running, standing if you go running every week. More people sit down. Keep standing if you go running every day. More people, like a large portion of people sit down. And then he says, keep standing if you go running every day, no matter rain, shine, night, day, no matter what, you go running. And then like a couple of people standing. And he says, to those people, no matter when it's rain, shine, snowing, whatever, we're the people under the street light cheering you on. And that is basically this. It, the whole thing about why he said that is because he is saying, just do it. The, the just whole do it. catchphrase. But without ever mentioning the phrase, without really trying to push it. But it's the idea basically that you are celebrating not the people who are succeeding, but you are celebrating the fact that there are people trying you are celebrating the doers, people who, even if they aren't sure they're going to succeed, even if they're not sure they're going to accomplish their goal, you are celebrating the fact that you are trying, you are doing something. So I kind of wanted to talk about that and the kind of mindset of being a doer. Yeah, um, that kind of reminds me of the, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the clips of like David Goggins or if you know who he is. Who the fuck is David Goggins? Uh, he's just a light skinned bald dude who is like a Navy SEAL, just like psychotic ass motherfucker. Like one of the hardest human beings you could probably ever fucking witness. Like mm-hmm. this dude will run through a fucking brick wall, bare forehead, booty bone naked if you tell him to. You know what I mean? And he'll make it happen. Well, his last name is Goggins, so. Yeah. Oh. Um, but basically, he talks about, he was like, yeah, you know, he's like, I had this guy. He's in my, you know, squadron, platoon, whatever, whatever the fuck, however, however the fuck, you know. He was like, I had this guy, and he, you know, he told me, he's like, David, I can't run longer than 10 miles. He's like, I just can't, like, every 10 time. 10 miles, by the way? This is a long distance. Well, for Navy SEALs and shit like that, they run, like, 20, 30 yeah. miles. You know what I mean? So he's like. 10 miles is just like. <laughs> it's a lot. It's, 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 don't get, like, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, bro, don't get me wrong. Like, that, 10 miles to me sounds like fucking death. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, like, I'm good uh, off that, bro. Like, one mile to me, yeah. like, I'm cool. I'm doing, the like, two miles on the elliptical, and I'm like. <laughs> yeah, bro, like, I'm straight. You know what I mean? So he's like, he's like, David, I have, like, I'm getting an issue with running longer than 10 miles. He's like, I, like, I get to eight or nine, and I'm, like, gassed. So he's like, all right. He's like, we're going to go running. So he goes running. And he starts running. He's like, dude, I'm telling you, like, I don't know what it is. Like, I just can't get past, like, you know, 10 miles. Like, I'm always, like, I always stop at, like, 8 or 9, blah, 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 boom, boom. He's like, how far are we going to go? He goes, I don't tell him. I'm just like, all right, come on, bitch. (laughs) Keeps running. 30 minutes in, how far are we going? Still don't tell him. Hour in, how far are we going? Still don't tell him. Two hours into running, bro. Two hours into fucking running, bro. That's a lot of running. How far are we going? Still doesn't tell him. He goes, 20 miles later, this motherfucker's still chugging. And I go, hey, we ran about like 20, 22 miles. And the dude's like, holy shit. He's like, you know, he just, and he's like, you know, we have these like short little like, basically we have these like circuit breakers like in our head. And we have like these like, you know, uh, contraptments that we put on ourselves basically that like you can only do this amount you know what i mean you strain yourself yeah you can only you can only do this amount before your body is going to give out on itself you can only do this amount before this kid's going to feel a certain way you can only do this amount before your body gives out yada yada boom 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 he's like if you just stop telling your mind that at some point and just stop counting you won't realize it but you will move past every and each single limit that you've set for yourself he was like it's just whether or not you want to tell yourself and acknowledge it or if you just want to keep on going and realizing that you do it a little bit later and go all right i can keep doing this but it's just having like a like breaking the circuit you know what i mean and like breaking that mental like cap that we put on ourselves yeah it's crazy (laughs) i think that one of the big oh. oh I think that one of the big stipulations to why people aren't doers is because 
the idea of winning in our society is so poignant. Needing to be a winner or a success story feels like a requirement to achieving or doing, you know? Yeah, I mean, no one wants to be a fucking loser. And that's the problem is I think that... We, Why is that a problem? I think that we <laughs> <laughs> that we set the stipulation, though, of like, if you don't achieve your goal, then you are a loser. Instead of being you should like, feel like a loser. No. Yes. Because here's the thing. That's how that's how you go, damn, I held it in hit my mark, but guess what? I'm gonna pick my shit up and I'm gonna go do that. I think that that's different because I think that people get dejected by that state of mind, the like loser terminology, the downtrodding people who Bro. fail. Because that's the thing. While some people get motivated by it and be like that motivates me for that fact that I didn't, you know, that I am quote unquote the loser or whatever. I don't know if I can get behind because like that's like that's like giving a kid a participation medal for being coming in last. That's fuck different. that. No, it's the same shit because you're saying, you know, because you don't you you don't you know, you, you don't want to hurt that kid's feelings and make him feel like a loser for coming in last. So you're going to give him a participation medal. Bitch, fuck that. You lost. Get better. <laughs> what do you mean? I think you're getting lost in the sauce. How so? I explain it to me. That we shouldn't feel like losers if we don't accomplish a certain goal. I don't think we should absolutely kick ourselves down, That's put ourselves I mean. in a fucking hole. That's what I mean. Though. Don't get me wrong. Is society? But you should. It. Yeah. Okay. But you should. Yeah. Don't. You should still feel some type of way about yeah. not hitting a goal. But like you I should don't still. Think that you need the societal pressure of being like, I am the worst. I am the sh- in the shitter now. I am like downtrodden and i will never accomplish my goal because that's what a lot of people do is like oh you've done this thing you're never going to accomplish this goal it is impossible because you are a loser you are not capable of it oh so then that's not them putting that on themselves that's the that's outside people like you said that's my point yeah okay it was just the way you worded it i guess and so if you instead go in with the idea of like my willingness to try is everything and then when I keep trying, when I keep doing the thing, I will achieve it. The mindset that you have entering that is entirely important. Yeah, and I think it's a big difference. Like, if you're your biggest critic and you're genuinely, like, the biggest, the first and biggest person to be, like, on your own ass about shit, and I think you have to build that, but I think, like, you're going to be the most honest person with yourself because at the end of the day, you know how much work you're putting in with shit. You know how much, you know, time you're putting into things. Yeah. You know how much research you're putting into it, you know, back into it. All the all this shit. So you're going to be your biggest critic. And with that, if you are your biggest critic and you know that, you know, you are your biggest fucking, like, oh, you got to be better on this and you got to be better on this. And nine times out of ten, you're not going to really pay attention or care about what other people say unless you genuinely value their opinion. I think that cheerleaders are important to counter the, like, not caring about what other people think. Because I think that there's always going to be a point where you dog yourself so hard, you hit yourself so hard, or you are hit by other stuff so hard that, like, somebody's being behind you saying, like, you got this, keep going. Yeah, and I, I feel you. I feel You like- can't argue otherwise because you know what you literally said before we hit record today? Yeah, we all need a support system. Bingo. Yeah, absolutely. and I, And I feel that. But I also think that... As much as you need a support system, you also need the the motivation from a hater. You know yeah, what I mean? but that doesn't mean that like everybody will. No matter what you do, no matter what you try to accomplish in life, no matter how good of a person you are, no matter how much you sweet talk people, you're caring, giving, whatever. There is always going to be someone who does not fuck with you. Yeah, and you know what's the so best? there are always haters. I think, I think, but it's harder to have people who stand by your side the whole time, no matter what you're doing, rain or shine, and say. I got your back. I feel you. And I feel like it's just all based on, like, sir, obviously, the, the person, the way they're brought up, and their perspective on certain things in, yeah. in life. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I, I, on a handful of people that I know, I think people, I know some people who would prefer to have someone look at them, disrespect them, tell them that they're not shit, and, you know, basically spit at their idea and dreams. And then be like, all right, bet. And and to them, it's more satisfying proving somebody wrong than it is to have somebody and be like, nah, bro, like, you got this, bro. Like, fuck yeah. that shit. You know what I mean? And, and, and I think that's just based off, like I said, like the type of person. And I think you're right. But also, I think at the core fundamental, even you admitted it before, of like, 
nothing is accomplished alone. Yeah, absolutely not. You need, you definitely need help with everything, but I think it's just more of like, and it's not like I'm saying that person has to be behind you 24 seven being like, woo, go team. Yeah, but, no, I feel you. You know, like when you, when it catches you, cause it catches everybody. There's always going to be a point where you either have to deal with imposter syndrome or or you are just down on your luck, or you're just not feeling it, like whatever it is, and it just hits you rough. Yeah, and you always need somebody to pick you back. That little drive of like being someone being like, hey, you got this. Yeah, no, I feel you. I think that a lot of people hit a stagger point where they don't see any progress, which is like kind of a gym thing, especially, but like, or even with the stuff we do, where they kind of don't really see any growth, they plateau for a minute, and they almost lose passion. They lose drive or they, you know, they feel stagnant. So it feels like they aren't making any progress or they're not hitting a goal or they're not, you know, achieving anything. So they're not doing anything. When actually your willingness to persevere, your willingness to continue trying to struggle through something or, or you know, just doing a thing, trying a thing is better than just giving up and not achieving anything. You know, yeah, and I feel like obviously people learn through like, you know, they always say like, losing is learning. You know what I mean? Like, failure, yeah. you learn from all your failures and shit like that. And like, um, obviously you should never take like a L as in like, oh, I just lost. Like, fuck it. You know what I mean? It, you know, you should always take something out of whether winning or losing. There's always something to be learned. Um, but. Obviously, never get used to failing. You know what I mean? Like, you can only learn so much before you're like, all right, you're just making the same mistakes over and over. It's not really learning. Um, I think that's something that I struggled with is, like, I have all this, like, knowledge of what is right and what is wrong, um, but I'm still deciding to do the wrong thing. And, it's, and then I sit back and wonder, like, damn, bro, why hasn't anything changed? It's like, oh, you're making the same fucking dumbass decisions. Yeah. Um so, I mean, it's just from that point, it's like, all right, bro, you understand, like, you know, what you should and shouldn't be doing. Um, and you understand what you, like, what scenarios you should be putting yourself in. You know what I mean? And it's just acting on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm-hmm. Nice cock. Nice cock. Uh yeah, definitely taking your L's in stride and then being like, okay, these are learning opportunities, but also learn when to kind of, you, you have to learn from them. You know, like you said, if if you're not gaining anything from them, then you're kind of just shooting yourself in the foot repeatedly type of vibe. I'm trying more hard not to move this around as much. Just mute it. No, because I want to keep it right here. <laughs> How do you become a doer? You just start. Damn. He nailed it. What a good podcast we have. End of the fucking episode. Bro. <laughs> Go just, home. Just be better, honestly. Like, just get it together. Bro, like, dude. literally just get your shit together, bro. Like, it's very honestly pretty fucking simple, bro. Um, I, I asked this question to you because I think that it's something that right now you can relate to. Yeah, because I really just started fucking doing it, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. A lot of people, like, I'm really a terrible example, bro, because I go lie to you. I really just picked a day and I was like, starting now. But what made you decide <laughs> that? What what pushed you to that? What is, like, the thing that keeps that grind going? Like, the 370th conversation I've had with me, myself, and I in my, in my mental head about me being an absolute just donkey piece of shit and not doing anything with my life. Um, and all these people telling me like, Hey bro, like you have a lot of potential and like, you know, you have a really big voice and like, you know, you could probably do a lot of good in this world and you know, this and that. And I'm just like, thanks man. Um, yeah, I'm trying and I'm really not trying. You know what I mean? So I was like, you know what? Let's try and see what happens. Cause, uh, I was tired of just beating myself up in my head. So I was like, starting this day, we're just going to cut this, 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 and this out. And we're going to see how this affects. And then we're going to slowly add on to it and, uh, just start breaking bad habits. So, uh, more of the story is pick one, any, any bad habit that you know you have, um, and that requires you to be honest with yourself. Stop being a little bitch. Look yourself in the mirror. Because your little voice in your head always tells you when you're doing something you're not supposed to. You're like, mm, you probably should stop doing that. It happens every time. And if it doesn't, you're a psychopath. I'm sorry. 
there's usually an angel and a devil on your shoulder, whether you like it or not. It's called your conscience. Yeah. And usually, it's kind of like 60-40, all right? Usually 60% devil, 40% angel, right? And everybody is usually a little bit more craziness, right? When you start actually listening to the good side, good things start happening, right? So, do yourself a favor. Pick a bad habit. It takes 21 days to break a bad habit. It's three weeks. We're at the beginning of the year. Start breaking bad habits. Watch how your life changes. Dudes, stop watching porn. Watch how you start looking at women. Watch how your body starts reacting in the gym. And you hold on to testosterone and all this bullshit and all the science behind it. And it's like it actually works and shit. And I was like, wow. Um, stop vaping. Have you, on that topic, like, I think it's Michael Reeves. When he's talking about like getting ready for the boxing event. Uh Oh, and people always talk about, like, yeah, like, some people just don't, like, fuck or at all. Like, yeah, well, like, no, his personal trainer told him, don't for the for, for the next two weeks, don't. Yeah. And then he's like, two weeks? Yeah. And then, or, or it might have been longer, but, and then he comes in, and he's like, I was just feeling slow and sluggish in the gym, and, like, I was like, hey, coach, what? <laughs> like, I, I'm just... I don't feel like I'm hitting as hard. Like, I, I just feel a little weak. Oh, like, yeah, then he was like, he was like you had sex last night, no, didn't no, you? No, he, he doesn't say that. He goes, you nut? <laughs> <laughs> and Michael goes, how'd you know? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, because, like, real life, like, obviously it's different for women because, like, women's anatomy, like, they can they can have an orgasm up to, like, ten times in, like, one shot. You know what I mean? If y'all find somebody to do that for you, y'all better put Crazy. a ring on Y'all better put a ring on that woman, man, whatever it is, finger. You know what I mean? Good for you. Um, Dudes, on the other hand, we're, like, after the first one, you're usually like, I need a, like a solid like 30 second to a minute recuperation of just my soul, especially depending on how good the punani is. Um, and, you know, like it's because your whole life force has just been taken out of you. You know what I mean? Or imagine, you know, it depends on how good the gawk is. You know what I mean? Like if that mouth is going crazy, talk like sometimes you just need a second. You know what I mean? Um <laughs> so with that it's like it's just it's crazy to think that like if you just hold on to that shit like you actually do do a lot more um <laughs> you hold on to your life force you know what i mean but if you're just out here busting gushies you know what i mean then like yeah <laughs> you know you're just gonna be a little bit more sluggish than everybody else but there are some people who can bust some gushies and then act like nothing has ever happened and they're just like i can go run through a fucking train you know nah, and dog, it's like i live in that clarity <laughs> that that like minute to two minutes is like i'm galaxy brain i'm like solving time travel you know the, the meme threats. you know the meme where like you like the brain yeah. activity slowly gets bigger yeah. and bigger that's me i have like the the biggest one it's like I'm solving quantum physics equations in my head Got without it. a chalkboard. Got it. That's kind of lit. We need a projector for your mind after your post night. You know, yes. I, I just need a text and then I'm going to, I'm going to project something off here. It's like how those guys do the, like the exercise thing with their Apple watches. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what we need. We need like a full like printing of just out <laughs> sent to you and you're like, oh. And it's just a transcript of my mind. <laughs> and you're like, God damn. But it only comes as a fax for some reason. It's just. <laughs> I'd be here for it, to be honest with you. But um, but yeah, I mean, there's just there's certain things that uh that you should work on um, breaking bad habit wise. um, And just you just honestly Google, bro. Just Google like, yo, top 10 bad habits that men have or women have or like people have or people have because like you'll be surprised to be like. I definitely do that, bro. And then, like, for me, cutting out certain things, I realized how much extra free time I had on my hands. And it was like, and someone made a, someone made a fantastic quote, and it was like, whenever someone is asked, like, why don't you build a business? They're like, oh, I don't have enough time to. All right, well, guess, guess what I had the time. When you're watching Netflix and you're watching, you know, whatever show you want to binge, I'm working on my business. Yeah, I'm doing that shit at the same time usually. Yeah. I'm watching shit and being like, okay, well, I'm working. Yeah, and and so he goes on. He's like, whenever, you know, you're taking a nap, I'm working. Whenever you're... Okay, I don't get motherfuckers who nap, and I don't get motherfuckers who all they do all the time is watch shows and TV. I don't know where you were really going with this, but the napping, sometimes you just need a power nap, bro. No, like, that's fine. Whatever. Like, 
but it's people who like religiously nap. Oh, like scheduled like yeah, naps like, on a daily. I nap at this time every day. <laughs> Or they're like, I nap twice a day. I'm like, motherfucker, you're asleep more than you're awake. Yeah. One. You said you're depressed. I'm like, (laughs) I got bad news for you, kid. (laughs) You want to know what one of the first signs of depression is? Bed Drowsiness. And then the motherfuckers who just all they do is watch shows. I ask them like, oh, what are you interested in? I just watch TV and movies a lot. And I'm like, I just listen to crime junkies. Like, I love I love movies. You know this. I like that's my bread that's, and butter. I think that's one of my biggest red flags in, in a woman. Movies? I, I watch crime junkies. I'm like, you're obsessed What's with getting crime junkies. It's the whole like behind the oh, killers I like true my crime stuff. Yeah, but, but like, like they're so obsessive about it, bro. Like you uh, bro, someone a comedian made a joke about this. They were like, bro, if you look at any of our like like Dahmers and stuff like that. Like obviously they're kind of attractive men and everyone. We saw it with the Netflix film when Ethan, whatever the fuck his name is, or Peter, whatever the fuck, I don't know what his name, whoever played Dahmer. Oh, I don't know what his name is. But you know who I'm talking about. I know, yeah, I think it's Peter though. And people fucking sexualized him and was like, well, oh my the, God, he's so high. That's, yada, 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 also, that's like the actor playing them. No, 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 but, and, but, but it was shown because they did it while the actual trials were coming out. Like women, yeah. women were going to his trial and cheering for him because oh, yeah. they thought he was so attractive. No, I know. These bitches are crazy. And, he, uh, and he, you know what it is? Someone pointed out, they were like, you know, it's just for that's women. Like the danger. Bro, and that's exactly what, the, bro, they said that for women, it is something about being near a killer and not being the one <laughs> and not being the one getting killed it's almost like being protected or being the chosen one um you're a psychopath <laughs> i'm sorry to tell you you're a psychopath man this <laughs> contrasts so hard with the conversation i had literally last night that's crazy <laughs> uh, uh you're a psychopath anybody who's like oh like i just like listening to the minds of like it's the whole thing of like it's the whole thing like the eye of the storm is the safest place to be in a storm yeah you're a psychopath like, yeah, you might be right, but also you're that does good luck getting, getting there. <laughs> also getting ten miles away is pretty safe too. <laughs> yeah, good luck getting there, bud. Um uh, Yeah, bro. It just it blows my mind how like that girl is so dangerous. <laughs> oh oh we're Blo- a comedy podcast second. It actually blows my mind to be honest with you. Anywho. Oh, <laughs> uh, do shit. Be productive. <laughs> Got him. What a podcast Let's we have here. <laughs> Let's come up. Uh, it's been a doozy of a recording. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, but basically, long story short, pick something. Um, either start doing it or stop doing it. Um, and Oh, yeah. Real quick. What, what What's the thing? What's one of your habits in the new year that you're the most proud of trying to break? Or like Born. been working on? <laughs> yeah watching porn i mean i think for me it's been a huge one where like since like high school is just something that like like in the middle of the day type shit i'd be like hey, i'm bored i'm gonna beat my day what okay yeah, bro, like well That's you got, crazy well, for me well you also have to realize like when it like people say like oh like you're addicted to porn yada yada this and that like sometimes you really are de- or like it, it really is an addiction like there was just some random times where i would just be bored as shit and i'd be like i'm gonna beat my dick that's crazy for me I don't know what to tell you. Well, like I, I guess like all of it is kind of crazy for me in the first place because it's something that makes me so uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna lie. It's just like I don't know. I feel like I was just desensitized from it like yeah. very early on. Um, but it so it's kind of like an interesting thing to be like that proud of you, bud. But also like I guess it's one of those things where it's like I don't get. It. Yeah, no, I feel you. Well, yeah, you're just you're an outlier. You know what I mean. I am, and we we also understand this about you. You know what I mean. I am the statistic. Yeah, it's okay, and fuck you for it. You know what I mean. But it's cool. It's okay, I have other bad habits. Hella, like being a bitch. Wow. <laughs> Got him. Did you catch a bitch? <laughs> Minus posture. If you wanted to know. <laughs> Got him. Got him. Bitch. Mine's posture, if you cared to know. Is it? Yeah. You're always just like... I'm trying to work on my posture a lot. I can help you out with that. <laughs> 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 ah!
That's what, I, that's what I should, should have said to the queen on Saturday. Oh, uh, speaking of which, we're coming up. <laughs> that's what I'm going to talk about. D&D? Yeah. Oh, D&D was pretty nice. Uh, I want you to explain your timeline thing first because I don't get it. Oh, um, basically, like, my life timeline is how I explained it to Jackson on what did I wanted to come up on. Um, basically, the best way I can explain this is, like, I have been just kind of shitting on myself for not being successful in a certain amount of time um, and comparing all of my shit to other people's uh, success or where they're at in life. And I have now kind of sat back and realized that, like, hey, man, like, you're not meant to be where all these other people are at yet. Like, sit back, prepare yourself. Right, because the equation, I was, I was actually talking to Kobe about it, uh, luck plus preparation equals uh, like a successful opportunity or like some, some shit like that. Yeah, and you know, that's how the equation is. And, you know, because you always hear like, oh, that dude was lucky. Like that dude's lucky on how he came up. And it's like as much as he was lucky, he got the opportunity. And he was prepared for it. You know what I mean? It's also work. Yeah, you know what I mean? And so people put, you know, if someone were to come to you and... I think whenever people put all of it on luck, they also are jealous. And yeah, they, absolutely. Like, I don't know how I could ever accomplish that. Yeah, because they don't know how they got there. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, and so for me, kind of just sitting back and like, all right, bro, you haven't done a quarter of the shit that you should have been doing and you're beating yourself up for not being where you're supposed to. Try first, do what you need to, prepare first, Attack it head on every way you can. And then if you fail, learn from it, go do something else. But I think I just been beating myself up and like not even giving myself a chance. I've been setting myself up for failure. So kind of like the timeline of just understanding that like it's going to take some time to be successful and like be where I want to be and that it's still easily attainable. Um, I just have to stop like thinking it's going to come like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I have to prepare myself for it. So, that's kind of like that's kind of what I mean by my timeline. Oh, yeah. Good shit, dog. Gang shit and the lame shit. Self-growth, baby. Let's talk about D&D. Yeah, D&D was kind of wild. So, we play I'm D&D. Sir Rizinator. We play a game of D&D I got week. the Riz. And this week, the group went to a gala, a ball. The Met Gala. Not I look like fucking takeoff. Rest in peace to the homie. Was being held by the queen of the capital that they currently work for, um, which is at war with another part of the continent. And the gala had a bunch of dignitaries from other parts of the world basically coming to it. And they were, the group was the honored guests of the queen for some of the work that they've done. And. Uh, how, how'd you feel it went, bud? I mean, I rizzed up the queen, to be honest with you. Uh, it was a great time. Before anybody can make a move on the queen, I started dancing with her. And I'm, as of right now, still currently dancing with her is where well, we left not off. not anymore. Oh, yeah. Technically. Oh, yeah. Technically, we're not because Jackson wanted to be a fucking bitch. Um, yeah, you want to say what happened? He basically just fucking, at the end... Of our session, he was like, I'm just going to drop this bomb. And he's like, as soon as, you know, everyone kind of looks towards the middle of the center of the ballroom, this fucking purple diamond, which we already knew what it was because we it's basically this big giant and it's like some galactic fucking thing. Um, There's a weapon that the content that or the empire, which is at war with the people that they're cool with. Um, created yeah that they are that the group originally tried to stop and then lost the weapon because it broke and got free and we weren't fighting that thing and we would have lost for sure and so the empire found it got it all taken care of packed it in a fucking lunchbox and now it's with you guys yeah so that means someone in the capital that means someone brought that bitch in here in the capital. Yeah. Where it was originally intended to go. In the palace. With the queen. And a lot of other dignitaries. Yeah. So now it looks like the Concord. I'm sure it just, it looks super sketchy. 
Yeah, it looks like the Concord trying to do some shady ass shit, but it's really the Empire, and it's just uh, it's gonna look very, very bad. And none of the group has weapons, pretty much, except me. Uh, actually, only two of the group members don't have weapons. Jeff and Shay. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of fucking nuts. But I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun time. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. I'm hyped. I'm kind of nervy. To be honest, kind of nervy. Yeah, I'm a little nervy to be honest. Why is that, Freddie? Um, because we were one. We just revived somebody. Yeah. You know what I mean? It seemed like you were really engaged this time. I was really excited. Well, yeah, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I just wanna. I'm trying to get with the queen, bro. I'm trying to make that little my, my little shorty, my little boot thing. Your little you know sugar I mean? mama. Yeah, bro. Because then she might be like, "Yo, we got this thing in the vault." Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I got you. You uh, know what I mean? Or she might know a guy who knows a guy who could be like, "Yo, I can make your shit." Boom, 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 boom. It's it's pretty hype right now. I'm pretty excited to see what happens. Yeah, I'm trying to have a kid with the queen. I'm trying to see what happens. But we'll see if we survive this fucking giant, to be honest with you. My, yeah, it's going to be a great time. Yeah, I don't know how y'all are going to do this. Me either, to be honest but with you. But it's going to be fun. Yeah. All right. All right, man. All right, man. All right, but I think that's going to do it for us. It is going to wrap us up in a little bow. Little present bears. <laughs> little present bears. Where 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 can they find you, Brendan? Um, uh, y'all can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch at KillerB420. Uh, and TikTok KillerB Dabs. Um, yeah, but go peep the Twitch. I'm probably gonna go, or I guess it wouldn't have come <laughs> out to. Uh, actually, I'll be live when this drops. Yeah. Yeah, on Wednesday I should be live. Um the day this drops around about like two hours after it drops, I should be live. Um Jackson probably should be live around that time or if not later in the night. Um depending uh, on if he works. Uh I don't know if I work. So it'll be like Hey, you might you might see a little Tarkov stream but from the homies. I'll be live that night too. Yeah, you might see a little Tarkov Tonight, stream. I yeah, guess yeah, you yeah. this on the day of release. Yeah. Gang shit, no lame shit. Uh come say what's up to the homies. Um, we'll have them all linked in there and shit like that. Go peep it out. But uh, yeah, where can they find you, good sir? You can find me at RQ on TikTok, Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter. And cockball torture. And you can find us at coming up for aircast on Instagram, uh, up for aircast on Twitter, and coming up for aircast on TikTok. Is that it? Coming up for air podcast. Podcast. Guy. Full name. The full name. Hell yeah, brother. Uh, on TikTok. On Cockball. If you enjoyed the podcast, make sure to share it with a friend, like, subscribe, rate it all. Yep. All that good stuff. Mm-mm-mah. Thank mm-hmm. you. Share Bup- it with your mom mm-hmm. or something. Bup- guess, mm-hmm. But uh, anyway, we'll see you next Wednesday. Be a good human being. Bye-bye.